I'm going to show you how you can set up network load balancing on Windows Server. So to start, I'm logged onto my web server and within Server Manager, I'm going to come up to Manage and then Add Roles and Features. In the wizard, we'll come to Role or Feature-Based Installation, select our web server, skip all of the roles, and then under Features, scroll halfway down and then select Network Load Balancing. We can press Add Features and then Next through the rest of the wizard and then press Install. While that's installing on my primary web server, we will move over to the secondary web server and we'll install the same feature. However, this time we'll use PowerShell. So in a PowerShell window, we'll run the following command, which is install dash windows feature dash name NLB dash include management tools. If we run this, this will then install the exact same network load balancing feature, but just done through PowerShell. So while that's doing, if we come back to our primary web server, that installation has succeeded. So if we press close and then under tools, we should have network load balancing manager. Within here, this is where we can configure our network load balancer. So the first thing we want to do is right click our network load balancing cluster and then press new cluster. For the host, we'll want to put our primary web server in. So I will give the IP address of my primary web server and then press connect and that should automatically pick it up and then press next. So in the first pane of the wizard, we can set a priority for this host in the cluster. It can be between one and 32 and the smaller the number, the higher the priority. So as this is our primary web server, we'll give this priority one. We can see that it's detected the IP addresses. We can add, edit or remove if we need to. And then we can set the initial host state and we can set this to the default state as started. Then we can press next. And then here we need to give an IP address to our cluster. So if we add a new IP address, now obviously this has to be unique and can't be used by anything else on the network. So I'll give this 10.0.0.50 and then the same subnet mask as the rest of the devices on the network. If you want to, you can do IPv6. However, we'll just leave it as IPv4 for the time being. Now that our IP address is set, we can press next and then we can configure some more information about the cluster. So we can give our cluster a name. I'll give mine network load balancer 01. And then for the operation mode, we've got unicast, multicast and IGMP multicast. For most use cases, you'll probably just want multicast. Especially if you just got a single network card on the device, this will enable it to communicate. However, if this does cause issues, you can drop it down to multicast, or if your hardware supports IGMP multicast, you can enable IGMP multicast here. However, for this demo, we're just going to use standard multicast. Then we can press next. Now we can set up the port rules. So by default, it allows all of the network ports through the load balancer. If you want to, you can lock this down. So for instance, as this is a web server, we'll only need 80 and 80 as this doesn't have HTTPS, but if it did, we just use 443. For the protocols, we can either select TCP, UDP, or both. I'll leave this on both. For the filtering mode, we will leave this on multi-host and single affinity. This will let clients be able to connect to the same instance. So if they get served web server one, they'll keep being served that. However, you can select no affinity, and that will mean every time a connection is sent, it gets served a random web server, or you can have network affinity, so that if you've got the hosts in the cluster that cross subnets, it will pick the closest subnet first. However, we'll leave this on single affinity and then press OK. We can then press finish. And then what this will do, this will then create our load balancing cluster. So if we give this about 10 or 15 seconds and then refresh, hopefully what should happen is this will turn from pending to converged. There we go. So we have got our cluster which is set up on 10.0.0.50. And we've got one host currently within the cluster with an IP address of 10.0.0.30. Now to add more hosts, we can right click our cluster and press add host to cluster. Then to add another host, we can give the IP address of the second host and then press connect. That's now shown as connected. It's picked up the interface IP, so we can select that and press next.
For the priority, this is automatically selected priority two, as our first one has a priority of one. Now you can only have 32 hosts within a single cluster, so we'll just select this one as priority two, as this is our second web server. We'll leave the IP addresses all as default, and then press next. What this has done, this has automatically picked up the defined port rules of the cluster, so we don't need to make any changes here. And then we can just press finish. And then this will add our web server 02 into our hosts of the cluster. Currently it's pending, it'll take about 10 to 15 seconds. That should automatically change to converged and then fill in the rest of the information. So we'll just wait for this to finish. Now that's finished, the second host has been added to the cluster and then both say they have a status of converged. So in theory, this should now be working. So if I move over to a different host, so I'll come over to an independent server that is not in the cluster and I open up a web browser. If we browse to the first host that is in the cluster, which is 10.0.0.30, it should return our web server. If I then browse to the second, which is 10.0.0.40, it should come to our second web server, which it has. And then if I browse to the IP address of our cluster, we can see that it has returned our first web server. So now we know that is working because we've gone to our IP address of the cluster and it returned one of the web servers. Now, something to bear in mind is even though we named our cluster NLB01, there are no DNS records automatically created. So if we come to our DNS manager on our domain, within our forward lookup zones, we can create a new a record and then set the name to nlb01 and then an IP address of the IP address of the cluster create the pointer record and then add host oh, there is no reverse lookup zone on this so now we've got our nlb01 so we can now go to nlb01 and it's returned our web server through the cluster now to check this is actually working, we can go back to our cluster. And then if we right click one of the hosts, we can go to control hosts and then we can stop it. So now one of our hosts is in a stop state and one is in a converged state. So in theory, it should just return the second host. So if we come back to our low balancer and refresh, there we go. So refreshing our NLB01 low balance and DNS address has now served us up with our secondary server. So if we come back to our load balancing server, we can see that our stop server, we can just right click and then start. So that's reconverging now. And then after about 10 to 15 seconds, it should go back into a converged state. And then once it's in the converged state, it should start responding to the web queries again. And there we go, that is back in a converged state. And that will now be responding to queries that's sent to the cluster. So that is the basics of how to set up a network load balancer on Windows Server.